it's me, and welcome to episode 30 of the Weekly Whisper. I'm your host, Elian Habanero, and I'm here to talk all things 365 Pro Wrestling. That's right, episode 30, 30 straight Tuesdays, 30 weeks in a row of the Weekly Whisper coming live, well not live, but being presented to you on Tuesdays on YouTube. Man, that uh, 365 YouTube channel is great, and uh, we just got that new opening logo animation video that goes along with the, some of the stuff. Pretty impressive. Always looking to get better. And I'm proud of myself because the first 10 weeks of The Whisper was pretty awesome. And then uh, wrestling got put on a halt. Obviously during this whole worldwide pandemic, uh, wrestling was kind of not uh, a priority at the time. And uh, I got through 20 weeks of not really having a lot of news. But thanks to the great company that I'm a part of, 365, for pumping out YouTube videos, um, always daily contents, always giving me something to talk about. Because imagine being in news and media and having no stories. And you don't want to just make up rumors. I mean, I had the rumor roundup, but there's not a lot of rumors when a lot of the, uh, the roster members have basically gone into hiding or they're just not putting themselves out there because they don't have much to promote. They don't have much going on. And I understand that, but I'm proud of myself for... Just doing something, being creative, uh, just trying to do something, and I and I am proud of myself. Like I said, so 30 episodes of the Weekly Whisper. Obviously, we're shooting for the 52. Wait, is it a leap year? Is there 53 years, or is it just one extra day? No, 52 weeks. We're shooting for that, and then um, we'll see how the feedback goes. If if it, that will continue after that, and man, four days away, and I'm so jealous, but I'm not like a bitter jealous. Because 365 gets to hold the first event. The, the rules and safety and guidelines are different in British Columbia, especially on the small Vancouver Island compared to the mainland. Not a lot of population. I don't think there's any cases out there. And, um, you know, they're in a different phase and they have different um, rules and laws out there. So, obviously being in Ontario with such a heavy population... Uh, it's going to be a little bit longer, but we can be happy for them. We don't got to be bitter. We should be, you know, take happiness from their happiness and just be glad to be part of a brand that has something going on. And uh, they do. And four days away, not only will it be the first show s since the pandemic started, but it's going to be a history-making show. 20 years from now, I guarantee Paul Wright will be somewhere typing up something about this show because not only will two new championships be unveiled and their history will begin as of this Saturday, August 1st. And we'll go back and talk about the very first ever global elite women's champion and we'll talk about the first ever 365 global champion. And there could be, I mean, the way the card is looking there could possibly be three new champions crowned. And what I mean by that is, obviously, the, the two belts that I mentioned, it's the first time ever somebody is going to win them. So, for sure, guaranteed two new champions crowned. But in our main event, we got Jordy Taylor, the old greedy bastard, defending his grand championship against Brett Matthews. And if you've been following them on social media, I even just stick to the Facebook and I'm getting all this stuff. Or the uh, 365's been posting on YouTube, but they've been having a, a war of video words. And they've been going back and forth at each other, but that will be the match. The Grand Championship being defended, put on the line for the first time ever against Brett Matthews. So if Brett Matthews wins, we will guarantee have three champion, three new champions crowned. And you never know what Dr. Walls has a sleeve. Like, I know Haviko and Eddie Osborne are in the, uh, both in singles matches, and possibly more than one, but Dr. Walls always pulls tricks up his sleeve. What if he decides to make them defend the tag team championships as well? So you never know. There could be four new champions. You just, you have to be there to find out what's going to happen and only the people that are there and I believe there may be one or two more tickets left I don't know by the time this gets put out and all we do all our editing and whatnot but um there just look into it if, if you're thinking of wanting to go there's no harm in trying to get there but I mean on the last week's whisper I ran over the card in thorough I, I did a good thorough job of it but I'm going to quickly do it 
just for someone who didn't watch that, which you should have watched it. But uh, so we got Liza Hall is going. Uh, excuse me, Liza Hall is going to take on Rhea Von Slasher to crown the first ever 365 Global Women's Champion. And I don't know if Liza Hall has the hometown advantage because it's in the Willow Point Hall and she's Liza Hall. I know lame joke there, but. Who do you think? Drop it in the comments. I told you last week I couldn't make a prediction, but there will be a new championship crown. I don't see anything happening why there would not be a new championship crown, and whoever does win that, congratulations. They're both very deserving uh, combatants. So, and then we got the three semifinal matches to crown the, fir to crown the first ever 365 global champion. We got the cremator Von Slasher. It could be a big night for the Von Slashers. They could walk right, both walk away as brand new champions. But first, Cremator's got to get by Nolan James, who I believe was the first ever BC... No, maybe it was Elite. He was the first ever BC or Elite champion. I can't remember which one, but he's won a lot of gold in his history of uh, being a part of this brand as well. And um, everybody, there's six people, and each one is not only deserving... But has a shot. The odds, whatever, a hundred divided by six is, man, that's like they all have about a seventeen percent chance in my books. That's like ar around there, sixteen point seven, something like that. But um, I don't think there's any clear-cut favorites. All these people have had success in the past, and it kind of reminds me of the other sports that are coming out. Yes, in hockey and baseball and basketball, these people have been proven in the past. But with all this time off. It doesn't matter how much you practice. You know, somebody that was hot before this whole time off, it's been about six months, could, uh, you know, they might have some ring rust. And so it's just hard to know who's going to show up and be on their best game after being off for so long. Excuse me. So then the next match, of course, EO, Mike Besher, Eddie Osborne, Campbell Rivers' own will take on Judas Iscaris. So like I was just saying, Judas was on an incredible streak before this all happened. He was at the top of his game. Not saying Eddie Osborne wasn't, but Judas was just climbing to new heights. But will this be a cause of him, you know, having to start back at square one? Have to be there to see. And I, I'm so happy. If you're a fan that's there, Man, send in your comments on the Weekly Whisper or give me a detailed recap of the show or a review of the show and I will read it out loud on next week's Weekly Whisper. If you send me anything, send it to me at ctw 52 hotmailcom or just message me on Facebook Messenger of your um, what you thought of the show, what you saw happened, what you liked, what you didn't like, and I will read it on the next week's Whisper. I love that stuff. I love the old reviews. So uh, there's one more semifinal match for the crowning of the first ever 365 Global Championship. We got the Golden Boy Travis Williams versus another hometown hero, Avico. And um, so this is another hard one to pick. Avico, man, he, he can, you just never, he's a ta current tag team champion with Eddie Osborne. And he always brings, um, he has that underdog surprise element to him. But he's no longer an underdog. When he's had that much success, you can never count him as an underdog anymore. And Travis Williams has been known to do great things. And I feel like the fans are the winners for all these matches because it's going to be great competition. So the winner of those three semifinal matches will go on to later crown the first ever 365 Global Championship. I'm having a hard time saying crown and clown today. I apologize. And then, of course, the match I was talking about before with Jordy Taylor versus Brett Matthews. So as of right now, there's six matches scheduled, but you never know what could happen because, um, I don't know if you saw the news about uh, Clay Wilson, and this there's got to be more to this. And I'll get into that. But also, I forgot to mention, Ref Tim will be there officiating all the action. Um, the best stand-up official that you could ask for to uh, take part in this event. And then we also got that Zach Andrews is coming out with Nolan James in to be in Nolan James's corner. Um, there's got to be something more to this, too. They were tag team partners in a couple of matches. Why is Zach Andrews not wrestling? Why is he just being in Nolan's corner? I don't know. I don't trust this. Maybe I should trust it. 
but they they seem to have something up their sleeve, perhaps. Mm, this is a tricky one, but look for Zach Andrews to be a factor anyway. Why would he go all that way and wait all this time and not wrestle to not be a factor? So we got those two I forgot to mention. And then obviously the YouTube channel. Um, over 1,800 videos now. We're almost caught up with the amount of videos as subscribers. There's over 2,000 subscribers on our way to, to 2,000 videos. We had a PWA alumni, Outlaw Scott Chase, send in a batch of tapes. And we've been going through that, putting up some of the Great Lakes Championship Wrestling from Ontario uh, events from about 2003 to 2005. And there's some good ones. We had, uh, I believe yesterday, they had one with uh, Tony Atlas, Mr. USA, featured on the show. And there's some great matches to check out the history of independent wrestling throughout Canada. So it's pretty interesting, I find, to, to, to see that stuff and to go back and see some of your favorites. Like, there's Eddie Osborne. There's... I mean, 16 years ago, and just to see how what his tendencies were and, and uh, the way he wrestled and how he's evolved and changed over the time. So check out the YouTube channel. You can find the podcast. You can find me, The Weekly Whisper. Any kind of media-related videos, like I was talking about the Jordy Taylor, Brett Matthews videos, or Dr. Walls, The Commissioner, they put all that stuff on the YouTube. So that's your place to be. If you subscribe and hit the notifications thing, you'll always know what's going on. And then obviously the whisper is like the recap of that. It's like your 6 o'clock news once a week. But then sometimes I get exclusives. And um, and also I can break it down. And mine's more opinion based. Um, I just say how I feel too. And then I'm pretty soon I'm going to be able to have guests again. Which will be delightful. And then so yeah. Like I mentioned Clay Wilson. It was announced yesterday on all the social medias. That Clay Wilson who's been a regular out here for 365 Ontario Wing is going to be a part of the show in Campbell River on August 1st. Now, I thought all the matches were announced and all the talent was announced, and this is very last minute. Now, could it mean somebody has dropped out that we don't know of? Um, I'm going to get in touch with Dr. Walls, but I wasn't able to get anything from him before I filmed the video, so I'll definitely try and have an update on that, but by the time I do, it may be too late. So if you want to find out what's going to happen before it happens, you need to be at the show. Or not before it happens, if you want to be the first one to know what happens, you need to be at the show. And I'm thinking of stowing away myself in Clay Wilson's suitcase just so I could be there, even if I wouldn't wrestle, just to be the fly on the wall. Oh man, it's uh, I'm, they're just so lucky, in my opinion. So Clay Wilson, why was he chosen? There's got to be more to this. Now, I don't know if anybody remembers this. And I don't even remember what episode, but there was a couple episodes, I think between episodes 5 and 8, somewhere around there, 4 to 8, where I did the Rumor Roundup, and I was talking about Clay Wilson and how there is some moves being made where uh, something was more for him in his future. I don't remember exactly how I worded it, but I knew that he, I didn't know if he was looking for representation, like a new manager, or something. I, I had heard rumblings about something. And could this be about what it was, or is this something completely different? Why was it not another BC uh, roster member added to the show? Why was Clay Wilson, all the way from Ontario, coming to the show? And, and why him? There's other people from Ontario that could have been it. So we'll have more on that in the future, and I can't wait to find out what it is. But uh, congratulations to him for being on, included on the show, as it was announced yesterday. I just find it... There's got to be more to it. So if he's announced as part of the show, there's either going to be another match or he's going to be an, an added to a match. We'll, ha we'll have to see, man. I can't wait. I wish it was tomorrow. I, like, I really wish it was, but it's not. But we're, we're so close. We're so close. I can taste it. So in honor of the whole, what I call a funny situation, like I smell something in the air with this whole Clay Wilson thing, but I decided to put together a list of I do the top fives every week, so here is a list of my top five Clay Wilson matches that are on the 365 YouTube channel, so I was talking about the YouTube channel and Clay Wilson, so I thought I'd tie that all in together. So maybe uh, some of the 365 uh, people that are on the show in British Columbia, Campbell River there in the Willow Point Hall, maybe they could check out Clay Wilson matches and they could do some scouting just in case, just in case they would have to maybe step in the ring with this man. 
on August 1st, this Saturday. So here is the top five Clay, Clay Wilson matches that are currently available on the 365 YouTube channel. So number five, I gotta put myself. I wrestled Clay Wilson four times in 365 singles, one time in a tag team match. I love all the matches, but I believe there's only two singles in the tag matchup. So I'm going to pick our first singles, um, the first time we, we wrestled against each other, which was in Guelph, Ontario. I love that match. Um, it was a different Clay Wilson. He had different gear back then. He was a little bit, uh, he wasn't as seasoned as he is now. But um, he was always a tough opponent for me. But I always enjoyed wrestling him because he, because he brought the best out of me. He really made me reach down. And I'm proud of the effort I put forth in that match. So check that out. Top five Clay Wilson matches on YouTube. Number five, me, Elian Habanero. And then, in the number four spot, we had Clay Wilson against Pretty Ricky Wildy. And that was at that new venue. Oh, jeez, I can't even remember the name now. In Kitchener, at that great little setup where they had this down the stage and everything like that. Pretty Ricky versus Clay Wilson is the number four Clay Wilson match featured on the 365 YouTube. Number three, I got John John Tavius. Clay Wilson versus John John Tavius gets the number three spot. A great match. I mean, Clay Wilson really never disappoints. He always puts out a solid effort. Uh, he always gets the crowd riled up in a good way or a bad way. He's a good performer. He's a good athlete. And uh, I got a lot of respect for him, I have to say that. So at number three, John John Tavius. And then number two, the night the place in the Red Chevron Club went crazy. And this was the match they did it in. Lenny Lilac versus Clay Wilson. Just a, an extraordinary match to watch. And they, if you want a little bonus, check out the Temple Entrance in Guelph, which was before this match, which is a separate video. But I picked the actual match of Lenny Lilac versus Clay Wilson as the number two Clay Wilson match on YouTube. And number one, I picked the United Front. Uh, Clay Wilson, when he was part of a group there, he had, was a group with Brandon Jacobs, Lance Malibu, managed by two magnificent Nicky Martin, and they had some great tag team matches over the years, but the one I picked was the one versus the Super Reversos. There's a couple more against the Temple. I think there's two against Super Reversos. There's a three-way tag team match, but the one I picked is just straight up United Front versus Super Reversos, and I believe it, it was Lance Malibu as Clay Wilson's partner in this particular match. So there it is. Top five Clay, matches, Clay Wilson matches on YouTube. I can't wait till the next whisper, whisper ex, epid, edition of The Whisper. Can you tell this video is almost done? I hope so. I'm slurring all over myself. My lips are getting caught in my teeth. But the next edition of The Whisper, episode 31, I'll finally have some results to talk about. And that makes me so happy. So the only thing left to do is like, or you get a leg drop, comment, or you get a clothesline, subscribe, or you get a suplex, and share, or you get a sleeper. I'm your host, Elian Habanero. I love wrestling. Cuba.